Hey, Math 30 2, and welcome to the new unit, Probability. Um, all right, so let's start with the first lesson here. So, we're going to talk first about just kind of the, the, like what probability is. I have a good feeling you guys have probably used this in your everyday life. Um, you know, if you say, like, what, what are the chances of this thing happening, right? What's, what's the probability of this thing happening? You might say it's like, oh, is that like a 10% chance or, you know, 90% chance of something happened? Um, if you were to flip a coin, right, and say, what, what's the probability of getting heads? You probably rightfully think, well, it's 50%. There's 50% chance it'll land heads, 50% chance it'll land tails, right? So um, this is worth reading through. So yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll let you guys read through that, but I'm going to move on to some of, the, some of the concepts here. So basic concepts and probability. Well, we've got some, some terms. We've got the result of an experiment. It's called an outcome. Okay, an event is any particular outcome or group of outcomes. And then a sample space is the set of all possible simple events. Okay, so that'll make a bit more sense, I think, with, with some examples. So if we look at this one, it says, if we roll a standard six-sided die, describe the sample space and some simple events. Okay, so the sample space is the set of all possible simple events. So notice how it's written the same way as it was in the last unit, right? This is like really the universal set from the last unit. Um, and what's involved in the universal set or in our sample space now is, well, just all the numbers in the die. So one to six, right? It could be any of those numbers. Now, some examples of simple events would just be, you know, rolling a one or rolling a five or rolling a three, anything like that, right? And then some well, they're called compound events. That compound just means made of more than one. Um, so made of multiple things. So that would just be something like we roll a number bigger than four. Or we roll an even number. There's more than one answer for that thing, right? Okay, but those are different events. Now, this is your formula for probability, right? You're definitely going to have to know this one. This is a great one actually just to know for everyday life too, right? You should probably have this one in your toolkit of, uh, of, of math, right? So uh, given that all outcomes are equally likely, we can compute the probability of an event using this formula. So what that first part meant, given that all outcomes are equally likely, that just means that if I'm rolling a die, right, and there's six sides, that it's just as likely to get one as it is to get five, right? They're, they're all equally likely. So if that's true, then our equation is probability of an event. So let's say like rolling a two or something like that, right? Is the number of ways an event can occur over the total number of possible outcomes. And I know that's kind of a mouthful. So um, in short, you can think of it this way. The probability of an event, so P and then bracket E, right, is equal to favorable over total. Okay, so let, let's look back to our, well, let's actually look down here. We got some good examples. So it says, if we roll a six-sided die, calculate, and then this says the probability of rolling a one. Okay, so using our formula there, that would just be um, the probability, so P of uh, one, we'll say, so, yeah, so that's the way this works, right? You say the probability of rolling a one, so that's where you put the number or whatever you're trying to do on the inside. I could have written the word too, rolling a one, like we did there. I'm a little lazy, so I'm just writing P of and then one is equal to, and then it was favorable, I'll just say fav, over total. Okay, so then the number of ways that you can roll a one, well, there's only one way to roll a one. It's to roll a one. So there's only one way that that can happen of the six over the total of six. So there you go. There's our probability. Our probability is one over six. Okay. And that's, that's really it. So if I look at, at B, so B says there are <clears throat> two outcomes bigger, oh, sorry, probability of rolling a number bigger than four. Okay. So bigger than four doesn't include four too, right? It's not bigger than or equal to four, it's bigger than four. So the only two possibilities here when we're rolling a dice, or a die, 
is five and six, right? Those are the only two, two things it could be. So the probability of that, well, it's gonna be favorable over total again. So that's just gonna be, well, there's two ways. It could be a five or it could be a six over a total of six different outcomes. So two over six, so that really is my answer, but we don't like to leave it that way. We wanna simplify that. We would divide the top by two and the bottom by two just to simplify the fraction. So that'd be the same thing as one over three. Okay, there you go. <clears throat> so yeah, this last part here too says, right? Probabilities are essentially fractions and can be reduced to lower terms, like just like fractions, right? So. Okay, so here's a pretty standard question too, right? So it says, let's say you have a bag with 20 cherries and 14 are sweet and six are sour. If you pick a cherry at random, what's the probability that it will be sweet? So all of these events are just as likely, right? So well, I shouldn't say just as likely, but um, if you pick a cherry out of there, you don't know what you're getting, right? <clears throat> but so the idea here is that, so it says, what's the probability of it being sweet? Well, there's 14 different options for it to be sweet. Okay, so here, I'll say probability just to be, uh, write this out like in mathematical terms here. I'll say probability of, you know, I'll put S, probability of sweet. Oh, I guess that's not gonna work because the other one's sour. Let's go probability, I'll write the whole word. Probability of sweet is going to be, well, remember it's favorable over total. Okay, so probability of sweet, favorable, there's 14 of those. And the total, well, there's 20 in the bag, so 14 over 20. So again, we're going to simplify that, though. You divide the top and the bottom by 2, so we'd end up with 7 over 10. So, it's, yeah, well, we'll get there. You might be able to see that that's a 70% chance, right? But, okay, well, I'll give you some examples of that, too. Okay, cards. Very common for us to use cards when we're thinking of probability um, uh, things. So one thing that you guys got to make sure you got down, I always kind of, I, I never really know this. Some students don't play cards and they like, you know, they don't really know how the suits work or like, you know, what the cards are. We should get this one figured out, right? So you've got in, in a deck of cards, you've got four suits. You've got diamonds, clubs, hearts, and spades. And of every one of those, it goes from, well, that's two on here, and it goes up to ace. So you've got two to 10, and then jack, queen, king, and an ace. And there are, this is a big number to remember when you're dealing with these cards ones, there's 52 um, cards in the deck, right? So then it might ask you, like, how many, like, you, you might need to know how many of those are spades. Well, that would be 52 divided by four, right? Because there's four different um, suits, so 13. Okay, so those are just some basic things about a deck of cards that you, you need to have for, for this unit. So, okay, so it says, yeah, standard deck of, uh, a standard deck of 52 playing cards consists of four suits, yada, yada, yada. Um, oh yeah, so it kind of just tells you everything I just told you. Okay, so it says, compute the probability of randomly drawing one card from a deck and getting an ace. Okay, so how many aces are there, right? That's our favorable. So I'll say probability of getting an ace is equal to, well, there are four aces in a deck, right? One, two, three, four, 52 cards. So four over 52, and that really is it. So you could also call that, well, we divide the top and bottom by four, that'd be one out of 13 would be the reduced fraction. And then this is the first time we did this. You could say, if you rounded this, right? Or you could say this is the same thing, it's approximately equal to 0 0.0769, right? Why it's approximately is because there would have been more digits behind there, but we just rounded it. Um, okay, so what we can do there though is we can turn that decimal into a percentage. Do you remember how to turn a decimal into a percentage? All you do, so if it's 0 0.0769, is just multiply by 100%, right? And that gets you there. So there is a 7.69% chance that a randomly selected card will be an ace, okay? Oh, so yeah, you, you multiply by 100, but I also just want you to know this, that you could also just move the decimal place two times to the right, right? That makes it nice and easy if you're going from a percent to a decimal or decimal to a percent. Just move that decimal place two times. Okay, so notice though, like in this last question, when we had 
zero point zero seven six nine, like written as a decimal there, that notice that the smallest possible probability would be zero, right? So if I say a decimal of zero, then that means it's not going to happen. There's a zero percent chance it would happen as well, right? And the largest possible probability is one. So if this number went all the way up to one, right? So if that was like a one as a decimal when I did it, then that would be, well, one times 100, that's a 100% chance of it happening, right? So our probabilities when they're decimal are between zero and one. So that's this part here too, right? So it says certain and impossible events. So that's where this comes in. So an impossible event has a probability of zero. A certain event has a probability of one. And then probability of any event must be greater than or equal to zero or less than or equal to one is what that's saying. So some number like that, right? In between zero and one. Okay. Okay, so now, now let's examine the probability that an event does not happen. Okay, so this should look a little bit uh, familiar too. Complementary events. Do you remember in the last unit how we had like a circle and maybe this was A, and then we said, what's the complement of A? And that was, let's say, like everything else outside the circle. The same thing is gonna be happening here, right? So we're gonna, the complement is gonna be everything but that event, okay? So it says, as in the previous section, yeah, 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 uh, okay. So now let's consider the probability that we do not roll a six. So the probability that we do not roll a six, or so probability not a six, well, how many ways can that happen? Well, that could be one, two, three, four, five, right? There's five different ways that that can happen. So that'll be five over a total of six. Notice that the last one, right? So probability of rolling a six was one over six. Probability of not rolling a six was five over six, right? Notice that those would add to one, right? That would be six out of six or one, right? They're always gonna add together. So the probability, so if you've got a probability of something happen, the probability of it not happening is gonna be your total, right? Six minus the probability of it happening, right? So if there's one way that it can happen, there's five ways that it can't. And I know that probably seems kind of straightforward, but it always kind of catches kids every year. So just, just be careful on that one. All right, so the complement of event, like what we were just talking about there, so the complement of event is the uh, is E doesn't happen, right? What's the probability that something doesn't happen? So the notation for that, same as last time, pretty much if there's anything above the E or above the above this, then that means the complement, right? That could be a dash, that could be a C, or that could be a, like the prime symbol. Um, yeah, so that should look familiar from unit one. Uh, we can compute the probability of the complement using, okay, so I know this looks confusing, but all this one's saying is really what we had above there too, right? So let's say if I said the probability of an event is, and I'll keep it as a decimal, 0 0.25, which would be 25%, right? If I multiply that by 100. And if I said, what's the probability of the event not happening? Well, maybe you can guess this, right? It would be 0 0.75 or 75%. That's all this is saying, right? It's saying, the probability of the event not happening is one minus the probability of the event happening. That's really what we did here, right? We said, okay, the probability of the event not happening, the complement of the of probability event is equal to one minus, and then the probability of the event happening in my example there was 0 0.25, which is just 0 0.75, right? So 100% minus 25% gave us 75%. We, like these are percentages. We just like to deal, like they're better as decimals. The only useful way to write a percentage is as a decimal, right? We, we, you, can, <clears throat> you can do uh, math a lot better with it. Okay, so if you pull a random card from a deck of playing cards, what is the probability that it is not a heart? So if you're a highlighter type of a person, you should highlight that or underline it, whatever you want to do, because that's an important word, not a heart. So there are 13 hearts in a deck. Okay, so the probability that's not a heart, or sorry, the probability that it is a heart, we should do this first. So probability that it is a heart would be 13 out of 52, which would simplify to one over four. 
which makes sense. There's there's one or there's four suits and one of them's hearts. Okay, so you can probably see from looking at this before I even move on, what's left to get to one? Well, that would be three out of four, right? There's three other suits. So three, so yeah. And this is all just written a little bit more confusing, but it's the same. We did this in our head. We said, okay, well, one minus the probability that, so one minus one over four is equal to three over four. And I know it was fractions, but what we really did there is that one, well, that's the same thing as four over four minus one over four, which is equal to, and you can see it more clearly now, four minus one is three over four. So same thing. You could have also turned it into decimals if you like. So. Okay, and that's it. So um, yeah, make sure you guys do your homework questions and then we'll move on to odds um, in the next lesson.